So the next month is going to be awesome in terms of superhero movies. We have Captain Marvel and Shazam. Both of those films have something in common coming out of theaters, and that is the fact that they are both superhero origin stories of an individual character. And today I'm going to give you guys my ranking of my top 10 origin stories of all time, theatrically released of one individual character. A lot of stipulations there, hard to get out. And the reason I say that is a way to simplify this list instead of going the Incredibles, the X-Men First Class route, movies in that vein, and Guardians, of course. I'm going to stick to an origin story focusing on one individual character. Today in this video, I'm just going to be giving you guys my personal, I shouldn't have to clarify this, but of course the movies on this list, it's all subjective. These are not the best of the best rated by cinematography and shot selection. Now, these are my personal favorites, the movies that I either gravitated to, I grew up with, or filmed that just strike me in a way that makes me absolutely love them. There are going to be some older ones, some newer ones, but let's get right into it, starting with not number 10. I'm going to give you guys first some honorable mentions. Some honorable mentions you might see and go, Austin, what are you thinking? Not putting that in the list. And I'm just like, sorry. So my honorable mentions include the first Superman movie, Thor, Dread, the original Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange. You guys, make sure to go down below and comment what your favorite superhero origin story of all time is. And if you have a list, put the list in the comment section. I want to see full lists from top to bottom. And if you have seen Captain Marvel, I have not yet. Include that in your list as well because, of course, that is an origin story. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Now let's get into the list and start with number 10. At number 10, we are diving into the origin story of Dave. That's right, Dave. Austin, what, what movie is Dave from? Dave, the main character from Kick-Ass. This is Matthew Vaughn's superhero movie based on a comic book, and it was so exciting at the time. It's something different from anything we have really seen. More grounded in terms of what a superhero movie is right now, especially when you're looking at movies like The Avengers and even The Dark Knight. But Kick-Ass did something at the time that was really needed in the superhero genre, if you will. And while it didn't make the most money in the world, audiences, as far as I know, really enjoyed the film. It is so much fun to watch this ensemble cast, but really, like I said, this is an origin story list, so I have to talk about the origin of our main hero, and that is Kick-Ass. He is such a likable character, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. In my opinion, brilliantly, he is really funny, he's relatable, and he's someone you want to win at the end of the day. And because of this movie, we got a sequel that I was very interested in. It wasn't as good as the first, but it still had a really good first movie. At number nine, I have Captain America, the first Avenger. I really loved this movie the first time that I watched it. At the time, I didn't know that Cap would go on and become one of my favorite superheroes. Maybe my favorite. That's, that's still yet to be determined, but of all time on the big screen, played by Chris Evans. Now, this movie is not as good, in my opinion, as the sequels, but it's still really good in terms of what it does for the origin of a superhero. We see him go from this scrawny, small, childlike man into this big old dude, but the important aspect of this film is not how he grows physically, although that is important. That's how he grows emotionally and mentally. He becomes not just America man, he becomes Captain America. He is a boss, a hoss, he is a leader, a natural born leader, and we see that later on flourish and flesh out in the Avengers movies, but it all starts with Captain America, the first Avenger. Maybe one too many montages in this film, and I don't think Red Skull got the due time that he needed, especially because he was such a cool character, but overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I love rewatching it, and it's a really solid aspect of this trilogy. And then comes maybe the smallest hero of the bunch, and that is Ant-Man. Ant-Man is something completely different than any other film on this list. I would say the closest is honestly Kick-Ass, but Ant-Man is just so much fun to go back and rewatch. It is a heist film, yes, but it has some of the best and most entertaining comedic aspects of the entire MCU. They tried their best to duplicate it in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I liked Ant-Man and the Wasp, but it all really started with this first film and what they do, especially with Paul Rudd's character and how how they go about his origin story and how they slyly modify it from the comics. I didn't mind that as a fan of the Ant-Man comic and as a fan of the Ant-Man character. I really like what they did with Paul Rudd as this character and going with Scott Lang instead of who we all expected Ant-Man to be in Hank Pym, I think worried us at first, but once we saw the movie five minutes in, I'm like, nope, I like Scott Lang. I like how they're going about this and it's a really good origin story. 
Number seven, here we go, Controversy Amok. Now, I, it could be where I grew up with this film and others grew up with the original Superman movie, and I acknowledge that it's a really good film, but it's not one that has that nostalgic factor on me. I think of nostalgia, I think of Man of Steel because that's really the movie that impacted me, and I know it was only like six years ago, but six years ago, I was just graduating high school, so I was still a kid at the time, but I really enjoyed this movie the first time I watched it. I didn't love it, but the more I go back and rewatch the film, the more I see that it is the origin story to the Superman that I enjoy. It's a Superman that does whatever is necessary, but it's one that could develop and should develop into something different. I know a lot of people have a problem with the fact that he snaps Zod's neck, and it's not like it's the first time Superman has killed because he did it in all of the other movies. Maybe it's how he goes about it. But controversy aside, I look at the fact that it's just a really good origin story for a Superman that should have went on to do better things, but you know DC's just gotta, just gotta say bye-bye Henry Cavill, and I gotta say stupid. Up next, we are going to stay in the DC Universe, and I am going to tell you guys about a little movie called Wonder Woman. I loved this film so much when I first saw it in theaters. I do have issues with the third act. I think it kind of falls off the rails a bit, but those first two acts, and the movie really as a whole, and the moments that Wonder Woman has, the trench scene, anyone, that is incredible. But it really dives deep into how she became Wonder Woman, why she does what she does, and it gives you this character that is inspiring to everyone, not just young girls, not not just women, and that's who it is intended for, but it inspired me. After watching this movie, I felt like I wanted to run through a wall because I was so happy with what they did for the character. It really was the point in time where DC was starting to turn the tides a little bit and get back on track. This movie did so many things right, and at the end of the day, it's just a really good origin story. Now, this is very close to Man of Steel for me, but I still have to give the edge to Wonder Woman just because the character herself is a lot stronger, and Patty Jenkins is a really good director. At number five, a lot of people don't think of this when you talk about superhero movies, but they should, and especially since Glass came out, that's right, the final movie in the trilogy, and regardless of my thoughts on that film, I thought it was okay, the ending kind of fell apart for me, I still think Unbreakable is one of the best superhero origin stories of all time. It is an incredibly well-directed movie. M. Night Shyamalan, this is back when people were comparing him. Oh my god, he's the next Steven Spielberg, and watching his first two movies, I'm like, Maybe they were going a little far, but that's not too far-fetched. What he did with Unbreakable was so revolutionary for the time. And you can go back and look at the critic scores. They were not that high, but when you ask people today what is one of the better superhero movies of the early 2000s, I often hear Unbreakable because of how cool, revolutionary, a tad bit slow, but I think it was warranted for the story they were telling. And two incredible actors in Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis, guys, I really, I love unbreakable, and that's why it's number five on this list. At number four, one of the best theater experiences I have ever had in a comedy, and the reason I say that is because I had always wanted to see Deadpool come back, or I'll come to the big screen for the very first time, but make its impact into pop culture, because it really hadn't before that point, but now, you think of Ryan Reynolds, you think of Deadpool, you think of funny superhero movies, you think of movies like Ant-Man and Deadpool and Guardians of the Galaxy, but a lot of people will argue that Deadpool is the best Fox and the best X-Men movie of all time, and I can't make too strong of an argument against that, guys. I think Deadpool is awesome for what it did. There are so many good elements of this film, but it all really starts with the direction from Tim Miller and what Ryan Reynolds did as the character. Just how they kind of went about winging it and going off script. Now, they had a script and they had a basis for what the story was, but the ad-lib dialogue, especially between Ryan Reynolds and TJ Miller, guys, this film works on almost every comedic level, but you look at it and how creative the storytelling was for an origin story, because we get superhero origin stories all the time, and how often do we see something as interesting as Deadpool was at the time, guys. I love this movie. That's why it's so high up on this list. And I hate to keep rehashing all of the Marvel films, especially when I'm going to talk about them again later on in the week when I rank the MCU films, but right now, I'm just gonna barely hit on Iron Man because I wanna hit on it later on. This movie's awesome. Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark is incredible. It is the defining superhero origin story when you think of the MCU and what it has done for us as viewers. And Robert Downey Jr. really has established himself as one of the mainstays, the ultimate actors in terms of what it means to be the superhero that you are 
are portraying on screen. He does that in this film. He is so good as Iron Man. This is an origin story for the ages. A man getting stuck in a situation that he just has to get himself out of. It is survival. That's what he has to do, and he does it. But in the process, he becomes Iron Man. What an origin story. What a movie. I am going back to rewatch it soon. <laughs> Number two is Batman. Not the 89 Batman. I'm talking Batman Begins. 2005, I was 10 years old. And fun fact, this movie frightened me to death when I was a child. I watched it, the scene where he's on fire, the scene where they spray Scarecrow serum on Batman and all he sees are these demonic creatures, guys. This movie is scary for young kids, but I am no longer a young kid and I can go back and appreciate what Christopher Nolan did in a directing sense and just appreciate how incredible of an origin story. This is for Batman. The closest I have seen to this, Batman the Animated Series did a really good job, but really, if you're talking about how Batman became Batman, I always go back to Christian Bell in this movie and just how they go about telling this story and how you feel for his character and how Scarecrow really was one of the great first villains in the Batman universe, along with Ra's al Ghul. Can't forget about Liam Neeson as that character. But overall, guys, yeah, I love this movie. When people try to say, Austin, Batman begins is better than The Dark Knight. I'm like, well, I love The Dark Knight, but Batman Begins is also one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, so I can't argue too strongly. It is a great origin story, and that is why it is barely number two. And we've reached my number one. I am so scared to tell you guys what this is. And usually I don't feel this way, but just the fact that this movie has come out so recently, people are going to be like, Austin, recency bias. You just saw the film. It just came out on digital. That's the only reason it's number one. Well, first off, I have to go by my score. What score I give the specific movie. This is the highest score of any movie on this list. So that's my first argument. And even if I didn't go by my score, we are talking about superhero origin stories and what it means to become a hero and how they go about doing it and the creativity that goes into the film. Ah, man, I'm sorry, guys. I just believe Into the Spider-Verse is the most creative origin story I have ever seen on screen, on film. And I know I said I was staying away from the groups and there are other origin stories in this movie, but let's face it, this is a Miles Morales movie. This is all about his character. We start with him, we end with him. The entire arc of the movie is based around what he does. And the moment he becomes Spider-Man is the moment you realize I have been watching something special. I am in for a special ending, and this movie is just special. I sat down the other day and watched how they went about animating this film and the countless hours, and that's the case for most animated movies, but the fact that they did this, it took them like the same amount of time to render one second of footage as another animated movie takes to render four seconds of footage. That's the amount of effort that went into this movie. The heart, the soul, the spirit, you can feel it. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, guys, they put everything into this film. And a lot of people saw that trailer and said, this isn't going to work. It's too weird. It's too different. And then the movie comes out and just blows. Almost, I've seen some people that don't love it, but almost everyone away. And because of all of those reasons, I have to put it at number one on this list. I'm not saying it's definitively maybe the most entertaining or even the best movie on this list because God knows Everyone loves Batman Begins and Iron Man and Deadpool, and I love those movies with everything in me. They are awesome. I go back and rewatch them all the time, but what Into the Spider-Verse did for me anyway was incredible, and that is also one of the reasons why it has climbed up my 2018 list, and at this point in time, it is my number one favorite movie of last year, guys. I just, I love this movie. I'm sorry I put it at number one. You know what? I am not apologizing, guys. This is my list. These are my favorites, but what I want to see now, I want to see your all's list. Get in the comment section down below. Show me what movie do you love? What origin story do you like going back and re-watching? What is your favorite superhero origin story of all time? Animated, live action, television, anything or even comic books. We can dive into that as well. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you so much for following me. My next video on this channel is going to be a review for Captain Marvel, followed by a ranking of all of the MCU movies, of course, Netflix and Doom Patrol on Friday, as always, and then a spoiler review for Captain Marvel. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, sticking with me, and I will catch you.